This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this beautiful Sunday morning as we gather together to worship the Lord, as we gather together as God's wonderful people to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that's above all names. We gather to fellowship one with another, to pray for one another, to lift up one another, to care for one another, and to make a difference in one another's lives. We gather this morning as God's wonderful people. In our scripture this morning, Jesus is confronted by the Pharisees about giving divorce, and there was two different groups in the Pharisees. One was a conservative group, one was a liberal group, and they were trying to entrap Jesus. But Jesus, in turn, turned it from uh, a bill of divorcement to what God intended marriage to be in the beginning. And then Jesus, when he goes into the house, Jesus notices that the disciples are trying to keep the children from coming to him. And so Jesus scolds the disciples for trying to keep the children from coming to him. And Jesus takes a little child and he takes it into his arms. And he says, in no wise keep these from my kingdom. And so once again, we remind ourselves of how important it is for children to be a part of the kingdom of God. Jesus wanted them to be a part of the kingdom. He wanted you to participate in the life of the kingdom. And so this morning we once again remind you how important you are to Jesus and how important you are to the community of faith and how important you are to make a difference in the lives of those around about us. Age makes no difference. It's our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and allowing Him to live in us and we living in Him that we make a difference in the world. So Jesus wanted the children to have a part in the kingdom and we want you to have a part in the kingdom. We want you to participate in the life of the church and to make a difference in the lives of those around about you. Let us pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these precious children. Heavenly Father, when your disciples tried to, to chastise the children and send them away, you open up your har arms and welcome. Heavenly Father, we welcome these children, and Lord, we just ask you to bless them. Heavenly Father, continue to use these for the uplifting of your kingdom. Heavenly Father, may your spirit dwell in each and every one of these that they might be drawn closer to you and Heavenly Father, that they might make a difference in the lives of those around about them. Heavenly Father, we ask it all in Jesus' wonderful and precious name. Amen. Thank you all for coming this morning. This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to remember all those that are sick and those that are shut in, those in the nursing homes. We ask the Lord to be with them. And we want to uh, lift up Christy Metz. She's still struggling, and uh, the doctors have given her very little hope, but she continues to hold on. She continues to reach out and, and continues to have our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. We continue to lift up Lewis and ask the Lord to be with him. And we lift up the Darby family and uh, the death of Wilton. He passed away last Sunday and his funeral will be this coming Friday here at the church at 12 o'clock. Visitation will be on Thursday from 12 to 2 at Heritage in Simpsonville and the funeral will be here uh, in the sanctuary uh, Friday at 12 o'clock. So keep that in mind as we continue to lift up Tammy and Jerry Wayne and, and ask the Lord to be with the, that entire family and hold them close during these days. We continue to pray for this nation. 
My prayer is that after the confirmation vote yesterday of Judge Brett Kavanaugh, that the world will, in Washington will come back to itself, that God will work in the midst of it and bring peace and harmony. God never intended for this nation to, to become what we have become. And so my prayer is that God will, will send his spirit among the people that we can live in harmony, we can disagree, but we don't have to get in one another's face. We don't have to be deceptive. We can come together as God's people to make a difference in this nation. And I pray that God will bless this nation and continue to walk with it day by day. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this morning, Heavenly Father, there are so many that's upon our hearts. There are so many people that are struggling today in so many different ways. Heavenly Father, there's so much hatred in this country. And Heavenly Father, we just pray for your presence in the midst of all these different situations. Lord, we ask for your guiding hand to, to be in, in our very midst. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your concern for each and every one of your precious children. Heavenly Father, we thank you for walking with us and for, for being there for us. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Thank you for allowing your son Jesus Christ to go to the Calvary's cross and shed his blood that our sins might be forgiven, that in him we might find life and find it abundantly and have that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning for all those that are sick, those in the nursing home. Heavenly Father, we pray for, for those that are bereaved, Heavenly Father, we ask that you might be with every one of them. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might touch each and every one in every situation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these precious lives that are gathered here today. Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts, and Lord, you know what each and every one of us are going through. Lord, you know our struggles, and Lord, we just ask you to continue to be with each and every one of us as you continue to meet our needs. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might bless this nation, and Heavenly Father, that you might bring peace in the midst of turmoil. Heavenly Father, you might bring love in the, in the midst of hate. Heavenly Father, we ask that you just continue to encircle this nation and hold us close. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who gives us hope for each day and gives us that life and gives it to us abundantly, gives us eternal life. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning for your precious Holy Spirit to live and dwell in our hearts, that your Holy Spirit might guide us and direct us in all the ways that you would have us to go. And Heavenly Father, may your Holy Spirit go with us throughout this service that everything we say and everything we do will bring glory and honor to your holy name. And thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions. And we pray this morning as your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 453, More Love to Thee, O Christ. <laughs> Thank you. 
softer reading is found on page 755. We're reading from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and those who dwell therein. For God has founded it upon the seas. And established it upon the rivers. And who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in God's holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts. Who do not lift up their souls to what is false. And do not swear deceitfully. For they will receive blessings from the Lord. And vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek the Lord. Who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the ruler of glory may come in. Who is the ruler of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the ruler of glory may come in. Who is this ruler of glory? The Lord of hosts. The Lord is the ruler. Forget the fall festival on Saturday, October the 27th from 5 to 7. We'll have the hot dogs and the hay ride, the trick-or-treat walk and trail. Uh, please bring a dessert and drink to share and there's sign up for the other items in the back. So if you will do that, it will be greatly appreciated. And we have a note that we'd like to share with you from uh, this past summer. Uh, it says, thank you so much for allowing the Salkahatchee campers to have lunch in your wonderful facilities every day. It allowed the campers to get out of the heat and enjoy lunch together. We appreciate your being a part of the 2018 Salkahatchee and be a part of sharing God's love and improving the lives of some in our community and Christian love, Joanne Thomason. It was a privilege and an honor to be able to open up our fellows' facilities and allow them to use them. That's what we're all about, making the difference in lives of people all around us. Remember the fish fry next Saturday at uh, Green Pond? Uh, they use it for missions, so keep that in mind as we worship the Lord together. May we worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings.
Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for these gifts and those that are given them. Heavenly Father, receive these gifts for the uplifting of your kingdom as we make a difference in the lives of those around about us. In Jesus' name, amen. morning from the 10th chapter of the gospel of Mark. And Jesus arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea by the far side of Jordan. And the people resorted unto him again as he was. He taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife tempting him? And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. And for this call shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. So then they are no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me this day as I break the bread of life unto your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have gathered together to hear that bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might know in every word that is proclaimed and every word that is received. In Jesus' name, amen. Our subject this morning is marriage according to the Bible. The story is told about a young woman by the name of Katie who had gone to a seminar in Arizona 
And when she finished the seminar, she was heading back towards home, and as she was driving along the way, she noticed an elderly Navajo woman walking beside the road. And so she stopped and picked up the elderly lady, and uh, she had asked her, Do you, would you like to have a ride? And so she said yes, and so she picked her up. And they were riding along the way, and, and the Navajo woman never would say anything to her as they were riding along the way. And after a good little distance there, the, the Navajo woman looked over at Katie and said, Well, what do you have in that uh, brown bag? And she said that, uh, well, I, I got a, a brown leather jacket for my husband. And so the Navajo lady didn't say anything for a little while. And directly she said, a good trade, a good trade. What are you willing to trade for your spouse? Adam was willing to give up a rib for Eve. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God created everything that was made. And he looked at it and said, it is good. And then God created man in his image. And God created the animals and, and he brought them to Adam and and Adam named the, uh, named the animals. And then God looked at Adam and saw that Adam needed a helpmate. And so he put Adam to sleep. And he created woman out of Adam. Male and female did God create in his image. And he said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother, and he shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall be one. What God has joined together, let not man asunder. And they were naked, and they were not ashamed. God created man and woman, male and female in his image, so that they, in the very beginning, would bring about children that would be from the image of God. The Pharisees came to Jesus, and they were in an argument between the conservative group and the liberal group about divorcement. One group said, well, if, for any reason at all, if you want to divorce her, all you got to do is give her a piece of paper and divorce her. If you don't like the way she cooks, if you don't like the way she washes your clothes, you can just divorce her. The other group wanted it to be more reasonable for a divorcement to take place. But Jesus reminded them that when he asked them, said, what did Moses say? And he, they said, Moses said, give a writ of divorcement. And he said, it was because of the hardness of your heart that Moses wrote this unto you. But in the beginning... When God created man and woman, male and female, He created them in the image of God. And He said that it was God's intention for the two to become one. And it was God's intention for them to have children that was also created in his image. But he said because of the law that was under Moses, that you have changed what God intended to take place. That you have made a woman to be a thing, a commodity, 
that she can be traded, that the father has control, that the father can sell her into slavery, that the father can sell her to be someone else's wife. The father has control. But that was never God's intention. God's intention was for male and female to become one in Christ Jesus. And what God had joined together, not let man asunder. For that reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to the wife, and the two shall become one. As we look at marriage, we see its relationship with, with, with Christ as it is regarded to each other. For we see that, that in a marriage, first of all, there has to be commitment between the two. We have to be willing to make a commitment. It's not feelings and emotions, but it is a thoughtful, committed decision that we make. We make that commitment to one another. We make it that we are willing to give and to take. We are willing to do whatever it takes that the two might become one. We make that commitment to one another. Sometimes in that commitment, we, we might have to give up something. We might have to give up a day of fishing. We might have to give up a day of hunting. But we make that commitment to be willing to give to one another. For Jesus said in that commitment to be his disciples, he says, you must deny yourself and take up the cross and follow me. You see, in a marriage, it's not about one or the other. It's about both of us becoming one. Making that commitment. Willing to deny ourselves and what we want. So that we, too, can become one. In the same way with Christ Jesus, we deny ourselves from what our self-righteousness wants, but what Christ wants in each and every one of our lives. And so it's that commitment that we make to Him. It's the same kind of commitment that we make to one another to become one in Christ Jesus, to become male and female. We make not only a commitment, but if that marriage is going to last, if those two are going to become one, then there has to be that communication between one another. There can never be a marriage that will last if you do not communicate with one another, if you do not sit down and talk to one another, if you do not work out your situations. In a seminar, one of the instructors of the seminar asked one of the men about his wife. He said, what kind of flower? What's her favorite flower? And he looked at his wife and he said, Is it Pillsbury? What is your wife's favorite flower? Do you know? Marlene's is a sunflower. After 50 years, I know. What's your favorite color? Do you know? What's her favorite color? Have you sit down and, and communicated with one another? Have you talked about the situations? Don't ever allow an argument or disagreement to go to sleep at night. Communicate one with another. Settle it. Because if you let it go, it will only grow and get worse. And so communicate with one another. In this world in which we live, with so many people working one job and another working another place, going here and there with, with the children, we find so it's little time to communicate with one another. But folks, it's important for us to communicate. 
Because you see, how do we get to know the Lord if we don't communicate with Him? If we don't go to Him in prayer, if we don't read His Word, how can we know what God has in store for us? In the same way, if we don't communicate with one another, if we don't talk with one another, if we don't share with one another, how can we know what's in one another's hearts and what's expected of one another? There has to be the commitment between one another. There has to be communication between one another. And then we make a covenant until death do we part. We make that covenant when we sign the license. The Supreme Court can say that a marriage is between two men or two women or between a man and a woman, but the Bible tells us different. The Bible says that marriage according to God is between male and female, and we were created in the image of God to become one. Folks, it's a covenant that we make with God. It's a covenant that we make with Jesus Christ. For when Jesus Christ went to the cross at Calvary and died and shed his blood, he did away or he fulfilled the law and brought about a new covenant where he now is the high priest and we can go to him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We can go to him anywhere we're at, and we can go to him, and he will hear our prayers, and he will answer us. What he did for us at Calvary's cross in, in his shed blood, he made it available for us to have the fullness of life, to have life that is victorious. And we can have that same kind of life in a marriage if we are willing to make that commitment, if we are willing to communicate, and we're willing to keep the covenant that we have made with one another. Wilton Darby had this marked in his book, and Tammy wanted me to use it, but I thought I'd share it today because it means a lot. It says, one day before we were married, I was at Jack's condo, 57 steps from mine, making homemade soup for dinner that night. Before chopping up the broccoli stems, I peeled the tough, woody outer layer and stuffed it into the garbage disposal. And then I turned it on. It groaned and gurgled. Finally, water began to rise in the sink. I clogged it. Jack, who was about to walk out the door to go golfing, calmly went to his tool closet, found a brand new plunger, and worked silently to fix the mess that I had made. Just as he was about to say something, which I knew would be a plea to not stuff such tough vegetable parts down the drain, I smiled and said, may I say something first? He looked at me and grinned and said, go ahead. Do you know one reason why I love you so much? Why, he asked. Because you never get angry. You never shout. I know I messed up, and I'm really sorry. I messed up your garbage disposal one other time a few years ago, and you did the same thing. You fixed it without getting mad at me. I love that about you. Jack smiled and shook his head and said, okay, fine. But please, no more tough vegetable peelings in here, okay? I promise. And at that moment, I experienced what makes a relationship work. Patience, kindness, being slow to anger, and learning to say, I'm sorry. Lord, continue to teach me lessons about how to make my relationship work. Keep my eyes and ears open and a few I'm sorry at the tip of my tongue. Patience, kindness, being slow to anger, and learning to say, I'm sorry. Two will become one. Page 12 in our hymnals.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. In the bottom of page 13, holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks to you and he broke the bread. He gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ suffering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. To your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, these are your precious children. Heavenly Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit might touch each and every one of them. Heavenly Father, that your Spirit might guide and direct them in all the ways that you would have them to go. Draw them closer to you and closer to one another. And Heavenly Father, we give you the praise and glory. Arise, my friends, go in the name of Jesus until the day he comes, until the day he calls. Amen. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit being with us this day. Heavenly Father, help us as we commit to one another, as we communicate with one another, and we hold to that covenant that we have made. Heavenly Father, may we make that commitment to you and may we truly communicate with you. And Heavenly Father, may we keep the covenant that is made between you and us that you might live and dwell in each and every one of our hearts. Heavenly Father, we ask it all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.